Hello, my name is Matthew Grindle, and this is computational modeling of the modulation of HSP90 by HSP70. What are HSP70 and HSP90? These two proteins are abundant molecular chaperones that are involved in the refolding of misfolded and aggregated proteins by conformational changes that occur due to ATP binding, hydrolysis, and release. Direct HSP90 HSP70 interaction and collaboration allows for misfolded proteins to mature. Understanding these mechanisms of interaction will aid in the development of therapeutics that will reduce oncogenic protein stability. So HSP70 and HSP90 working together can move from inactive partially unfolded client proteins to native active clients. So these proteins can perform their actual duties. For this project, we did a computational method known as normal mode analysis of elastic network model perturbations. These protein amino acid structures are stripped down to just the carbon alpha positions. And from those carbon alpha positions, we can attach any of the carbon alphas that are within about nine angstroms of each other with a spring to represent the biological movements. Elastic network models are perturbed energetically to find the large scale motions of the biomacromolecules. These influential modes are identified by the movements from one conformation to another, and we can see how those overlaps occur in the following slides. The first model that we performed computational analysis on was a lone HSP90 dimer, dimer conformation. Our ANM perturbation produced a set of eigenvectors that indicated the movements of around 100 vibrational modes. These modes with more than 35% overlap between conformations are the most likely trans transitional vibrations. Pairwise correlation matrices, these big squares over here and over here, of amino acids indicate the coupling and decoupling of regions of interest and the symmetry of motion within proteins. These dominant modes of interaction are found to be symmetrical scissor motion and a symmetrical twisting of the two pronomers in this single molecule binding. The next model in this experiment is a asymmetric HSP90 bound HSP70 model. One HSP70 added to the HSP90 model greatly decreases the flexibility of the protomer that is HSP70 bound. Decreasing the protomer flexibility indicates that HSP90 is functionally modulated by HSP70. This increased flexibility in HSP70 substrate binding domain, which is this pink domain, and decreased flexibility in HSP90 client substrate binding domain, which is this green domain, imply that a substrate handoff from HSP70 to HSP90 could be occurring for further maturation. On the HSP90 to HSP70 complex, uh, we have a return to symmetry. Um, this re recapitulates the zero HSP70 simulation. This return to high flexibility in the HSP90 dimer decreases the likelihood of HSP70 HSP90 modulation. Steric clashes in mode 13 here and mode 28 here are not conducive to real vibrations. So what does this mean? This means that a single HSP70 protomer modulates the movement of HSP90 dimer in a way that zero or two HSP70 models do not. These stereo clashes between the HSP70 protomers in two HSP70 model imply that some of the vibrations are not allowed. And these movements in the one HSP70 model indicate substrate handoff from HSP70 to HSP90. HSP70 could initiate the substrate refolding and work with HSP90 in client maturation in the one HSP70 model. In my future work, I would like to investigate the differences between the HSP90 HSP70 model and the HSP70 HSP40 model. 
I would like to acknowledge Kate Connors, Ben Carter, Rena Tever, and Andrea Kravitz. And um, yeah, have a nice day.